Fall semester, first day of class. I'm at the front of the room, looking over my notes, my art form's text open to page three. The slide of Barnett Newman's painting, Cathedra, comes up on the screen. Before I even start, I hear a familiar complaint coming from the back of the classroom. That's not art. She has that, you must be pulling my leg, in her voice. I return to my notes. This is how it always starts. She persists. It's just a blue rectangle. I try to reason with her, but she's having none of it. But seriously, what else could it be? Yes, it's a blue rectangle, but it's a rectangle made of blue oil paint, painted on canvas, which is stretched over wood stretcher bars, and it hangs on a wall in a museum in Holland. It's not a canvas tent or a patch covering a hole. So what else could it be? It's not really that different from Picasso's self-portrait of from 1901, which is also a rectangle made of oil paint, painted on canvas, which is stretched over wood stretcher bars, and hangs on a wall in a museum. And it's really big. So big, you don't so much look at it as be in it, like a big blue cloud. Oh, and it also has a white stripe down the middle and an extra piece added on the end. What's that? There are Barnett Newman paintings all over the place. New York, Switzerland, Canada. Barnett Newman was an American artist who lived and worked in New York City during the 1940s, 50s, and 60s when American painting was dominated by the Abstract Expressionist movement. Guys like Willem de Kooning, Ad Reinhardt, Robert Motherwell, Clifford Still, and Mark Rothko. Its most famous member was Jackson Pollock, whose breakthrough style was known as action painting, and who achieved what he called an all-over effect, but who represents for most people the my kid can do that school of art. But think about this. Are all the museums that own Barnett Newman's paintings and all the museum directors and curators who show his paintings and all the art critics who study and write about his paintings and the many patrons who have sometimes invested their life savings in his paintings and all of us who come to museums to look at his paintings to say nothing of the writers and publishers of art appreciation books like ours. Are they all fools or con artists? What can I compare this problem to? I like to watch Nova on TV. No, not that Nova. I mean PBS's science show Nova. The host, Dr. Tyson, is a bit of a showman who uses cool graphics to explain things like the Big Bang, and relativity, and really weird stuff like dark matter, and string theory. Say what? Now I don't really understand a thing he's saying, but he is a scientist, and he wouldn't lie to us, would he? Yes, you reply, but that's science, not art. I know everybody has their likes and dislikes, but just because you can't stand Ludwig van doesn't mean that classical music isn't music, right? And just because Lil Wayne makes you insane doesn't mean that rap music isn't music, right? And just because it ain't Radiohead don't mean that everything else is dead, does it? It's like, yeah, Picasso is the biggest name in 20th century art, but to me, I can take him or leave him. Now Matisse, on the other hand, Picasso's friend and sometime rival, he's definitely one of my all-time faves. Go figure. So, what does this all add up to? In a nutshell, nobody needs your opinion. Yes. What they need is for you to take art just as seriously as you do anything else and inform yourself on the subject before you start passing judgment. 
So go ahead and hate on Barnett Newman's Cathedra all you want. Just know what you're talking about first. Any questions? <laughs>